We always enjoy these last segments because we can, we won't talk specifically about these four movies that we're here chatting about earlier, but just more about composing in general and, um, and, and tap into what you're thinking on some. But let's start with uh, you, Nicholas. Um, first step in the process when you decide you're going to take on a project. Uh, at the moment when I first decide, um, that's a good question, actually. I think a lot of it is relationships. Uh, there are certain people I work with, like Barry Jenkins or Adam McKay, where you know if they just say, we're doing this, I'm like, great. Let's, but <laughs> when, when they give you the idea and you know, you know obviously you're going to work with them, you're yeah. going to work with Robert Zemeckis yeah. uh, or the Russo yeah. brothers, each of you have people, Jordan Peele, uh, yeah. that you know you're going to work with. When they give you that idea, what is your first step uh, to get things rolling? It's, it's a combination. I mean, I would say for sure it's a conversation, you know, getting a sense. I think, you know, we were all talking about the ideas, like how do you talk about music? How do you talk about what the right idea is? And I think it's a combination of knowing that none of us know the right answer in the beginning. You know, certainly none of us on a, on, on a, a film team. I think we're all going to try to figure out what works and see what feels right. Um, I definitely think that for me, it's, you know, I, I feel it's really impossible for me to know what works until I actually put stuff up against the picture. So there are those early conversations where, you know, we'll have like interesting ideas like what if we did this or what if we did this? But I think it's always, you know, it's very sobering to uh, get the footage and then try things out. So for me, it's a lot of that, those early steps. I was just doing some of that today. Um, on, we're doing a, a pilot with HBO um, about sort of a untitled Lakers project um, and uh, experimenting with that and sort of seeing, you know, you just tried out sounds even. I, I like doing that a lot where I'll just try out different sounds, different instruments. It doesn't even have to be music. It could just be like tones and colors and things like that. And uh, I think being very open to your own immediate reactions to things because uh, it's not it's not a rational process you know it's not it's not like there's this sort of set of ideas that I'm following linearly it's actually very much like oh that was that felt interesting and then maybe let me follow that a little more um, and just being willing to you know take a pause and come back to it the next day we'll go to each of you on that question Alan well I'm I'm remembering back to um when I first met Bob Zemeckis. And um, this was like at the birth of the mock-up. It really <laughs> didn't exist yet, but it was just kind of beginning. And that was on Romancing the Stone. And he, there was a particular challenge in that film. It involved the dance sequence. And just playing the dance didn't really work. Just playing score there didn't really work. We wound up with a kind of an interesting solution to it, but um, I remember showing Bob a number of different things and, and he somehow instinctively knew that, as, as he put it, he said, I'm just going to have to let you do this, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> and I remember sitting in this bungalow and just going, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of, you know, kind of how it's go, it's going to be, and and you know, it's. I think it was Jerry Goldsmith who said every every time a composer meets a, a director, it's like a first date, and clearly it is a first date, and and one of the interesting places Bob and I got to was, you know. As a director, I think he was challenged with, well, how do I talk to this composer? I mean, what do I, do I, I I'm not a musician. And he, he had an epiphany, uh, finally, and he, and he was so clear about it. He said, I got it. I'm just going to talk to you like an actor. <laughs> <laughs> and we've done that now, I think, for 30 what five years and so um, how many films I think we're we're doing the witches now I think it's number 24 with that with one director with with Bob and as he said it's 24 in a row <laughs> <laughs> um, so so um, it, it's very interesting to hear you speak ab about your experience because I'm I'm usually very early on in the mix, um, right down to, I'm doing this movie, then a script maybe will come, but until I actually see images, which I believe 
is what you were saying. Yeah. I don't really have my footing. And so when some images appear, I get to see how the actors move, how they sound, how the director is tonally approaching the storytelling. Until I really see that, I'm kind of completely lost. And then the process of just being kind of lost begins. <laughs> and, uh, and you work through, and it is a relationship and everything that goes with it. Sometimes I'm on the mark, sometimes, um, you know, Bob, with great respect, oh, will say, um, so I think this is beautiful, but I think you're 180 degrees <laughs> off on this. <laughs> And uh, that's a pretty clear direction. <laughs> it means print it out on some paper so you can tear it up <laughs> and just start over. <laughs> David, what about uh, this starting up? Um, the great thing about, so David Gordon Green is the director who got me started. And we've been best friends since we were like eight years old. Um, and so I did his student films in college and then so then he made this movie, George Washington, right when he got out of, out of school when we were like 23, 24 years old and didn't have, he probably would have gone with another composer, but <laughs> he would have done that before, but I think there was no money, so he's going <laughs> to go with a friend who did student film. But um, the great thing is, working with him, like I, he's my closest friend, so I know about whatever ideas are ping-ponging around his head, I know about well before it becomes an actual thing. So the conversations about the movies and the, the ideas and the music are right there at the very beginning. Um, but funny enough, just like y'all are saying, we can talk all we want. I could start coming up with some ideas, some instrumentation, some, you know, we'll have some spare time and send it to him. He's like, this is great. And once we get into this, some footage, it's more often than not, it's like, oh, this is, yeah, okay. <laughs> Back to the drawing board. Now that now that these are all just ideas, um, but it's still great just to have like already be thinking that far in advance, of course, and to have that like you're talking about to have that language established like the you and then because Jeff Nichols is the other director I work work with consistently, and that's a whole different kind of musical language than I have with David. Like you, and it takes time to develop, and so by the time I got to like Midnight Special, mine and Jeff's third movie together, I felt like oh we're we got it now. Now we have a way of talking about these things. Like, felt like on Mud, there was a lot of like, what do you mean? Like, you okay, you said you want French horn. I'm doing all these French horn lines. It doesn't work. And then finally realize, get a horn player who just plays like an A for like 20 seconds. Like, that's it. It's like, okay. <laughs> that's what you meant by minimal. You literally <laughs> just wanted the sound of a French horn. Now I get it. Okay. Like those kinds of things that you start understanding what someone actually means when they say minimal. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's, that's the great part about having these long partnerships. Like you're saying, you have the first date, and then you form an actual relationship, and you know how to understand each other, and yeah. Michael, you've only done two features with Jordan Peele. I can't even imagine what your relationship's going to be like on number 10. <laughs> I, I look forward to that, <laughs> whatever it is. Um, I don't know how I can add to these great answers. You hear the theme of how, how it's a relationship, and you... There's the theory, and then there's the film, and that's the fact <laughs> of how you have to approach the scoring. And those, those have been my experiences as well. Um, I've loved the chance to be able to contribute to the, the something I've noticed about Jordan is that he's, he uh, loves a great idea, and he doesn't care where it comes from. You know, he, it, he looks forward to the test screenings because of the feedback he's going to get from, the, from an audience. You know, and he, he respects that as much as notes from any other person. So, um, so the film takes a journey, and he is both, he's the writer of the script, so he certainly knows what he wants, but he also is um, willing to experiment and explain why, and then we go in a different direction. And so I'm part of that team that gets to give him ideas before the film is shot, and I look at that as an opportunity to really contribute to the, um, you know, to the, the world that the film is going to be. At the same time, then he figures out which ideas work, and some don't, and that includes the music as well. So uh, I'm both bringing him ideas and then responding to the things that work both for him and for other people on the team. 
I'll, I want you to each think about this. So whoever wants to jump in first, a favorite film composer, uh, either from the past or the present, that you just can't get enough of, that you love listening to. Well, I can say um, Mr. Williams. And, uh, and uh, on so many levels, um, his music, um, what he's done for all of us, uh, with how I believe he's changed um, the perception of the power of music, um, not just with filmmakers, but with audiences around the world. Um, Sandra and I were just back in Tanglewood about a month and a half ago, and he's done a concert, um, a body of material for Anne Sophie Mutter oh, yeah. as as the as, as the first artist to perform this, and it's all his music um, designed for one of the greatest violinists alive, and and there is Mr. Williams standing there um, like this bright light, just getting warmed up. <laughs> so um, there have been many great composers, uh, film composers, but for me, um, he has just been the greatest inspiration. Now, I know all three of you could say the same exact answer, so let's, let's get I, three other answers. I, I, would, I would definitely <laughs> agree with John Williams, but, <laughs> um, but I would also say, I mean, there's so many composers who are so incredible. I mean, I've, I've talked in the past about how... Um, when I, you know, Vangelis and Chariots of Fire and uh, was the first music that I ever, that actually got me to play the piano in the first place. But um, but along the lines of other composers that, that, you know, would deserve recognition, you mentioned Jerry Goldsmith earlier. I would say Jerry Goldsmith. Um, one of the things I love about uh, his music is every, and I think it's something that I'm always trying to do personally as well, is every movie has its own sound, you know, and every movie should have its own sound because they're their own unique story and their own unique world. Um, and the way that he writes and the ways that he approached orchestrations and, and sounds. Um, I was just watching with my wife uh, Star Trek The Motion Picture again recently, and that opening overture was it's just so mind-blowing, uh, actually. And I, I had forgotten that it was, it's just like there's this huge orchestral overture before the movie even starts. I think it's actually before the the logos, you know? <laughs> you're just like sitting there, it's on black, and you're just like, wait, this is like a huge, it's like an opera overture. Um, but it was, uh, you know, that music was just awe-inspiring. Um, so, and I think that's that's some of the, the best music, I think, is the music that you it just hits you in a way, and you can't even comprehend, you know, the full extent of it right away, so. Michael, what would you say? Uh, James Horner, let's not forget him. <laughs> Um, who also had a body of work that just was one stunning score after another. And some of the, uh, some of the same things about, you could say about Jerry Goldsmith with, is present in a Horner score too. So. And David, you wrap us up. I feel like we have to talk about more County, don't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd say, yeah. Uh, I just recently watched Battle of Algiers again, which is probably not even one of more County's more well-known or famous scores. And it was just, blown away again by it. It's got some of the most heartbreaking, like gorgeous stuff you ever did. And then there's some really intense martial stuff for the the battle scenes and then and then coming back with Hateful Eight, which was what his first American film in how long? I don't know. Probably Been a long many, time. Many, many years. And it was ruled. It was incredible. <laughs> he's probably he's like eighty eight, eighty nine. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. I remember being in college, seeing the untouchables Walking out of the theater, going to the uh, record store, uh, record stores then, uh, and of course they didn't have the album out at that that early stage. Every week I would go and do you have the Untouchables album? <laughs> that was one of my favorites, and that not always talked about. Guys, thank you so much. Good luck this Oscar season, thank and uh, thank you for all the great work you've done for many many movies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.